as Mr. Baumgarten here, end of the last video we had our list populating with some data, uh, but nothing else happening with it, so we're going to do that with this video. If you don't have this part working, you need to watch a previous video. All right, so if I close this and let's just minimize this screen, uh, you'll notice there that we had, uh, it's not gotten rid of it, um, it was coming up with the system out printing that we had asked it to do. All right, so uh, we are going to code up the list selection listener this time around so that when we click on an item in our list, we get our data printing out into the, the various text fields. So this function here will run any time I click on an item inside my list. Uh, so I can find out which item I've clicked on uh, from my list people uh, and there is a get selected index all right so that will give me the number of the item that you've clicked on so the first item you click on uh, if it's the first item in the list it'll be zero then one then two then three and then four and so on and if none of them are selected then uh, it will return a minus one actually one quick little gotcha on your list just do me a favor and check this do, 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 do. here. Selection mode, multiple interval. We don't want multiples. We only want, for this little project, we're just selecting one individual uh, item at a time. Please make sure you change that. Okay. Come back in here. So the item number that we click on is in here. Now this function will run any time the selection changes, including this thing here when it removes all the elements so if i had an item selected and then i've removed all the elements that's going to un effectively unselect it which will trigger this function to run and it will uh, have a selected index of minus one so before i depend upon what's in here and use it to get up to look up the people from my array list i want to make sure that it's not minus one so with this let's just uh, say person number all right, let's get the selected, get the index of what's selected. And we're only going to run this if person number is greater than or equal to zero. And if it is, then let's just make up, let's get that person. All right, so from the people list, we'll get that person number. And now I want to put all of the fields from this person into the text boxes. So text dot text name is that what I called it what did I call these oh I haven't named my text fields how did I not do that all right let's quickly come back here so do 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 do, do. Ah, I haven't done this <laughs> let's name these things all right text name text email Text phone number. Oops, got email twice. This should be text. That's why I had I didn't have the date of birth one. <laughs> um, phone number, email. Well, let's. I don't know. Let's call it address. We can do something else with it later on. Uh, I and I did do my date of birth one. Let's change this other label to do this one. Okay. So if we come back here, it has renamed all of our uh, objects. And what was I doing here? Text name. Okay, this should now be a thing. Text name. Yes. <laughs> Uh, dot set text All right, and that's just going to be the person's name oh, not name get name there we go All right, and as you might imagine it's going to work the same for all the others so text email dot set text e dot get email text dot what do we want to do next phone number set text p dot 
uh, get the phone number, text date of birth, set, now I need to set a string to this, date of birth only gives me a local date. Uh, da, 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 da. So, but it's a lo local date object, so I should be able to format it. that. Ah uh, yes, <laughs> I was wondering why this was coming up red, because this needs to be a formatter object, it's telling me, as I can see. Da, 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 da. So this should be date time formatter of the pattern, Oops. of pat pattern. And in here, I can put my DD, M, M, Y, 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 and yes, import Java time formatter, date formatter. Okay, that will give me the string. I, I could always just overload my um, get date of birth as well. Uh, da -da. All right, so that should, if I've done this right, if I run this, Hopefully it'll update the text fields based upon what I click in the list. Let's just stretch this out. There we go. Excellent. And just before we do populate, get these buttons coded, I, it just occurred to me that we didn't have the age field populating here. So I will quickly add that. And that's just one line that we need to add to our uh, value changed function, which is inside our add list selection listener. So what we will just do, I think we call it a label. Yes, label dot label age, set the text of this label. All right, so this needs to be a string uh, and we've got our p dot get age, which gives us an integer. You can see here, it's telling me this is gonna give me an integer. All right, so I need to take this integer and turn it into a string. So if I'm just going to do integer dot to string and put this in it as its parameter. All right, so that now gives me a string and then I'm just going to concatenate onto that the word years. And now when I run this, I should have my do do do. All right, there we go, the years is now being calculated. All right, now I really move, will move on to the next video.